Um. Um. I know there's a counseling center, but I don't know where it is or how to access it. I don't know. I don't quite know what they have now or what they could do to improve it. to think, feel, and act in ways that enhance our ability to enjoy our life and to deal with the challenges that we may face. Mental health is something that we all need to strive for. I think that mental wellness is a, is a spectrum, a continuum, and we, we may fall anywhere along that continuum at, at any point in our lives, but particularly at any point in your university career. And so it's helpful to know what resources there are for any period, um, for any time that you fall along that continuum. Illness is um, a health condition that's categorized by um, a disturbance in the way we may think, feel, or behave, and it causes us distress and it compare, impair our day-to-day -day function. If you recognize that there's something that is lacking in terms of the quality of your life, if you recognize that you, your emotions are not necessarily um, functioning at an optimal level, a more technical term, if your behavior is not adaptive, so what that means is, if you're not doing the things that most people can do. So when you think of students and you may think of them um, living away from home, having more financial responsibilities, needing to um, make new support systems, and of course dealing with the stresses of um, their class load and all of the, the, their coursework that they need to do. It certainly puts students at risk for developing mental illness. And so students, we do know, have some very predictable sorts of factors like time pressures, family pressures, um, separation from friends and family. Those are all things that are going to be predictors of, of mental health and mental illness. It's those changes in life and those new demands that people experience. And you can experience those changes and new demands at many different points in your life. Every year, every term tends to be different um, statistically as to who's come in more, um, mostly first years, second years, third years, fourth years. It's never been consistent, which I find fascinating. So we will see students for several, several times, all the way to just one time, because every process is different. We've had a really positive response um, to the creation of this calm zone space in residence. So it was a joint effort between resident services and a grant that we acquired through uh, the Unwind Your Mind grant through the wellness services at North Campus. And so um, what we provided here is just a space, a common place for students to come and take a few minutes to themselves, a um, place to have some quiet, to meditate, to do homework. Um, we provided a few resources here as well, um, some books, coloring books, um, some manipulative toys, some games, puzzles, those kinds of things. Ways that students can, can de-stress, unwind. The Cameras Addiction and Mental Health Office provides information, assessment, counseling support, and referral to individuals who may be experiencing um, issues or concerns in regards to alcohol or drug use, and in regards to mental health issues. Um, we offer services to um, children and their families, to adults and the senior population. How do you feel about mental health? in right now to do one of our interviews with one of the services that's offered at North Campus. We're, uh, we're making our way over there right now. So how hard is it, it to get to Edmonton? 
for me, I'm familiar with the Edmonton area. I go there often enough. I have my own car. And even then, it's difficult to, to find time and make my way all the way to Edmonton. You gotta worry about the weather. You gotta worry about you buying gas. Once you're in Edmonton, you gotta pay for parking. Parking can be very expensive in Edmonton, depending on where you go. Conditions for me are almost perfect, and it's still hard to get to Edmonton. have a, a culture uh, and an awareness of wellness um, of all kinds on our campus and to really promote the services that we have available. I think we have some really great services. Um, sometimes students don't know about them until they're in a point of crisis. And so, um, so the challenge for me is to, to find ways to help students discover what we have available before they're in crisis mode. Um, to help them seek those services earlier so that we can intervene and make sure that, that things don't get really terrible for us. So I think, I mean, a great first step is, uh, you know, our campus just being much more aware of, of the kinds of mental health concerns that our, our students and our staff and faculty are also seeing. And then just having um, basic skills to know how to refer. Talking about it and to start breaking down the stigma and um, start breaking the silence. Um, so if you're concerned about somebody, you can talk to them about some of the changes maybe that you're noticing in their behavior or how they're thinking. Um, a healthy diet is really important, um, proper sleep, um, connecting with others, going outdoors, volunteering our time, doing those things that bring us pleasure in our life, so those interests or those hobbies. We can do things like journal writing, reading, singing. We can um, spend time with a pet. We can reach out and help other people. Um, so there are many things that we can do to help bring pleasure in our life that um, help us to um, deal with challenges when we're faced with them because we're feeling good about ourselves. Alarm bells, any gut sense, go with it. Just go with it. And uh, always ask.